I never got to play any of the Sega consoles when I was a kid. Almost my entire childhood and early adolescence are completely void of any Sega games. I'll never be able to play Sonic, Ristar, or Knights through the eyes of a child. It wasn't until playing Sonic Adventure 2 on the GameCube that I finally got a glimpse into the world of Sega. I was amazed. This was awesome. If this is what Sega had to offer, I had to try out more of their stuff. And I did. Billy Hatcher was really unique and charming, and so was Super Monkey Ball. Damn, if this is where Sega was at now, I sure missed out when I was younger. Looking over their catalog of pre-GameCube releases, there was always one that caught my eye. Rocket Knight Adventures. The graphics looked colorful, the gameplay looked action-packed, and the main character looked pretty cool as well. All I ever saw of Rocket Knight Adventures were screenshots, but hell, it still looks super fun. Here I am, all this time later, never having played Rocket Knight. All of that's about to change. However, we won't be checking out the original Rocket Knight Adventures. We're going to be checking out the 2010 revival of the franchise, simply titled Rocket Knight. Contrary to what many think, Rocket Knight is not a remake of Rocket Knight Adventures. This is in fact a completely original game and a sequel to Rocket Knight Adventures 2, making this the third game in the series. The story begins with this guy seeing these things. After a quick outfit change in his house, he departs for action with the farewell of his family trailing not far behind. Our first taste of gameplay comes with a standard tutorial layout level. I always thought that if a game had to describe in detail what the basic controls are off the hop, that that's an automatic fail from an accessibility standpoint and that the devs don't really have confidence in the player learning the controls naturally in a progressive way. There are times where assisting the player with controls is absolutely necessary, such as acquiring an item or learning a new move. Could you imagine trying to get through Donkey Kong 64 without having any of the controls explained to you? I don't think it's needed in Rocket Knight. You can tell what each button is used for just by simply pressing it. On an Xbox controller, you press X to attack, press A to jump, and hold down after pressing again for a short hover. I absolutely hate <laughs> this hover. It might be the worst hover ability in any game I've ever played. I know it looks like I'm fucking up and letting go early, but no, this really is how long it lasts for. Whenever the hover is used, it drains from a power meter seen in the top left corner. The meter fills itself up over time, and careful management of it is key to beating levels. The default hover feels like an animation that would play if I ran out of fuel while using the hover. It just feels so lousy and worthless. The ground it covers is so minuscule that there were no large gaps I ever felt were an easy obstacle to pass because of this. Why not just let me hover until the power meter empties, or if that's too OP as a hypothetical, have it drain at a super fast rate the longer I hover for? This seems like such an obvious compromise, I can't understand why the hover function was kept this way. A couple other moves at your disposal are Rocket Burst and Burst Shot. Rocket Burst is a straight dash, and although it can't change direction during use, it can be angled to bounce off walls. It's mainly used to reach harder to get to areas, but it can also be used as a quick stab attack or an evasive maneuver as well. Burst Shot is a lot more basic, it's pretty much a projectile attack. On the flying stages you can even charge it up to shoot a screen wide death ray. Both of these drain your power meter too, so keep your eyes peeled. Yeah, there's flying levels. These are a bit harder. There's way more enemies hunting you down, as well as clusters and walls of landmines. Trying to keep tabs on everything at once is gonna lead to some inevitable hits. But none of them ever felt cheap or BS. The only thing I dislike about this level is the speed boost. It sounds like someone blowing into their mic on Discord. Level progression is as easy as going from point A to point B. Since this is a side-scrolling platformer, our freedom is a bit more condensed. We can't use the moves and the tool set given to us to reach the goal our own creative way. Levels are very straightforward and incredibly linear. Outside the beeline style design, making it through levels is actually pretty fun. The environments are all centered around your abilities. Enemy placement is strategic to teach you what characters pose what sort of threat before fighting them. It's a nice mixture of challenge and fun. You've probably noticed all the gems I've been collecting. You get points from them as well as killing enemies. Combo either or both of them to get a multiplier that increases your score. Now, I'm fine with the game having a higher priority on the score, but getting to the first boss battle, I still didn't know what his name was, what my name was, where I was, or what was even going on. This is one area where Rocket Knight completely fails, is the lack of storytelling. What we instead have are some 10 second long cutscenes that have no dialogue and explain nothing. They suck. 
It's clear the developers want the focus to be more on score, but then how am I supposed to give a shit about the story, the characters, or what I'm doing? I hate to say it, but the storytelling just feels incredibly lazy, like a last minute afterthought. Are veteran players of the series supposed to already know what's going on? Are newcomers like myself just meant to not care? If you go into the options menu, you'll see the story waiting for you right there, in the form of four chapters. I've never seen the story of a game being told in the options menu before. <laughs> like, what the fuck? This should show you how much the devs care, or didn't care about it. And if they don't care about it, why should I care about it? If the intent was to make me care about score while still including a nice story, they failed on all fronts. The story really feels uninspired and second rate. Cut the awful cutscenes entirely, take the novel out from the options, and that would give the high score or arcade type feel the game strives for. There is zero, and I mean zero, attempt to make Sparkster a likable character, or even a character at all. He doesn't shout any sayings, act enthusiastic, or do anything special. He just exists. He's not wacky, he's not fearful, he's not excited, he's not determined, he's just a soul slab of nothing. I'm so legitimately let down by the lack of personality that this game has, and with over two decades spanning between releases of this game, like it or not, nostalgia is going to play a factor for people returning to this game. And I just can't imagine longtime players of the series coming back and being satisfied with this. Oh well. Getting back on track with the gameplay, levels don't necessarily become harder, but they do get more tricky. What was once lots of flat terrain and one-hit kill fights are now replaced with moving platforms and enemies that shoot heat-seeking missiles and throw bombs. I like the latter part of the third world the most. It's a combination of time switch platforming while avoiding electric barriers. Playing these levels were one of the few times I actually felt challenged. Boss fights test the well-roundedness of your abilities. The first fight with Axel takes place on a flying level, testing your aerial maneuverability. The Wolf King takes more damage when reflecting his TNT back at him, measuring your timing and reflexes. The rematch with Axel is an all-out clusterfuck of bouncing projectiles, poison barriers, and rail hopping. A good, solid fight. It isn't without its flaws, though. There were many weird things that would just seemingly happen at random. Weird clipping issues, his moves would sometimes do the opposite of what they were meant to, like bouncing off walls in the wrong way or just not bouncing at all. The final boss is General Swineheart. He fights you while inside a giant robot version of himself. What a legend. Robo Swineheart throws slow, deliberate punches, burp out regular enemies, and breaks the ground you stand on, creating pits that insta-kill should you fall down one. To damage Swineheart's robots, you gotta slash him in the nose when he leans forward. After a few hits, the robot falls and emits electricity that slowly refills its health bar. This is when General Swineheart decides to reveal himself and take you out in person. Hitting Swineheart is a complete son of a bitch. His constant movement makes him hard to hit and his projectile attacks are fast and heavily damaging. Not to mention the electricity that's charging up his robot can hurt you as well. However, it can also hurt General Swineheart. I noticed that this did the most damage to him, so I tried to hit him over the electricity so he would fall and land on it more often than just going for a regular attack. There are a few hearts that drop after taking out the normal enemies, which partially refills your health. These appear in the regular game and regular boss battles as well, but these are a total lifesaver here because I'm needing them now more than ever. This boss fight was actually really hard. I was dying left, right, and center, but then out of nowhere, I accidentally stumbled onto an incredibly OP cheesing technique. There's a short platform you can hide under, projectiles hit the top of it, and when Swineheart drops to swipe at you, you can attack him easily, making him land on the electricity. You can do this over and over with no real threat of dying or even being hit. I beat Swineheart on the same run that I found this cheesing technique. Definitely a disappointing way to end, but very representative of the game as a whole. Good at points, but ultimately underwhelming. It took me just under two hours to finish Rocket Knight. What do you get for finishing the game? Credits, while a PNG is Sparkster with the earthquake effect jitters in place. Unless you want to play the game on a harder difficulty or go for higher scores on individual levels, there isn't much post-game content. There's some alternate skins you can unlock. Who cares? Rocket Knight is a very, very, very mixed bag. You have some cool abilities, some lame abilities, fun levels, bland levels, boss battles that are challenging, and boss battles that are easy to cheese. Accompanied with a near non-existent story, beyond boring characters, and I'm really not sure what to make of this game. What a shame. You know, Rocket Knight kind of reminds me of a couple other games I've played before, specifically Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from 2007 and Shaq Fu A Legend Reborn. 
These games have positives and negatives like any other game and are okay overall in their own right, but they fail to live up to the hype brought upon them by previous releases. Whether it's repetitive, stale gameplay, or a story that doesn't capitalize on the character's personality to create an entertaining and engaging story, the letdown is twice as painful if said game has a strong nostalgic connection to its past. This stuff is kind of just built on legend and fan enjoyment that gets built up over years. Fans of Half-Life 2 have been begging and hoping for Half-Life 3 for almost 15 years now. When Half-Life Alex was announced as the next installment in the series as a VR exclusive game, people were already questioning how good the game could really be. It's only because of the amazing storytelling and gameplay of the Half-Life games that came before it that will make Half-Life Alex have a little extra sting of sadness should that game actually end up not being anything besides incredible. I'm getting off topic. If I had to summarize what Rocket Knight is to me, I'd say it's like a no-name brand of regular flavored chips. Generic and flavorless, but not awful. Palatable, but not desirable. And above all else, there's 10,000 other options that are better than this. Worst of all, I'm turned off from trying out the original Rocket Knight adventure games now. But I did, and it's way better than this, so if you're going to play any of the Rocket Knight games, please try the original Rocket Knight Adventures. It's way better than anything this game has to offer. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Mediocre games are the worst of the worst, I feel. If a game is truly terrible, you can at least laugh at it like I did with Spooky Castle. That game is horrendous. With Rocket Knight, it's so meh, I literally can't think of a single thing that I would recommend someone try this game out for. This is the very definition of a 4 out of 10, 5 out of 10 game. Don't bother playing it. Even if you're a little bit curious, like, oh, I'm sure it can't be that bad, don't bother, trust me. I am beyond salty now, so I'm gonna go run to the convenience store and grab a bag of anything besides no-name brand regular flavored chips. See you guys.